Hey everybody, thanks for swinging by. I really do appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. It's great that you're here. Let's get into this video. We're gonna be talking about this rifle right here. This is the BCM Mark II BFH and uh, I am excited to bring you guys this video. Now, before we get into that, I kinda gotta bring everybody up to speed as to why I'm doing this video. First and foremost, I started this series last year um, late March, early April time frame, and I purchased at that time the most inexpensive AR-15 that I could possibly put together. It was about $400 based off some sales that Primary Arms was putting out and um, just being able to kind of pull it together. If you guys are interested in seeing what happened there, I've got a video right here you guys can check out. Or I have a card at the end of this video that you can click on if you want to stick around and uh, see what I'm talking about here. But in that video, I talked about why a person may not need to buy a BCM and presented that rifle as an example. Now, uh, right out of the gate, I did have some issues with that rifle, but I honestly think that that was operator error and not the fault of the rifle. I gotta make that clear. In addition to that, a lot of people were saying, um, you know, well, you should buy once, cry once. You know, people just need to go ahead and spend the money on a good quality product and stuff like that. And I totally understand that. I totally agree with that. However, there are some people who are just financially challenged and don't have the ability to purchase a rifle that's a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars. So if you are at that point and you end up purchasing a rifle six, seven, eight hundred dollars or even less. Um, you know, this is what you should expect. And that's kind of where I'm going with this whole series. So we've started with a Radical Firearms upper with a Anderson lower in the first video. Now we're going to be talking about the BCM Mark II. So what can I say about this rifle? Well, first and foremost, I'm just gonna let the cat out of the bag. This is my new favorite rifle. I have a lot of ARs and uh, I'm a big fan of Aero Precision and I will continue to run Aero Precision rifles depending on uh, what I specifically need it for. But uh, realistically, this is going to be my premier rifle. This is the one that's probably going to be babied a little bit more. Not that it needs to, it's just, just the way I'm going to treat it, right? Uh, it'll probably stay in the safe a little bit longer than some of my other rifles. And uh, even though I have some training coming up uh, here this month and in May, um, this will probably not go through the training with me. I'll probably use one of my arrows uh, just to kind of keep the round count relegated to them keep this one as nice as possible. Now, like I said, you don't need to do that with this rifle because this is built for duty use. And that's one of the things that uh, BCM has prided themselves on. Now, realistically, I gotta be transparent with you guys. I started the first video with, you know, the budget AR and kind of compared it to a BCM. And I've never fired a BCM. I've never shot one. I've never known anyone to have one. I do know people who've had some, um, and I have shot a uh, an, a pistol version of a BCM. But you know that's really not an apples apples comparison to what I was uh, shooting in that first video. So, with that being said. I went out and purchased this. This wasn't given to me. This wasn't uh, donated to the channel, nothing. I went out and purchased this with my own money. Cost me right around that $1,450 mark, $1,450, bucks, give or take, maybe closer to fifteen. dollars I can't remember. And uh, just so you guys know, the optics on this were uh, sent to me from Primary Arms. I'm doing uh, some uh, reviews on this, more on the optics in another video. But... Let's talk about the specifics on this rifle and what makes this um, so special. And that's what I'm really kind of getting at with the Mark II. This is a special rifle and it's going to uh, start with the upper receiver. As you can see right here, and I'll get some close-up videos or videos and pictures so you guys can see it, but the upper receiver has this bulge right here. This bulge is 
extra material. They intentionally bulged the upper receiver to marry it with the barrel. And what that does is that provides more material to create a more rigid platform that's going to increase your accuracy. And there's going to not be as much um, deflection or movement between the upper receiver and the barrel as it flexes while you're shooting. So that's something I really, really did like and kind of keyed in on when I was trying to decide which BCM I was going to purchase. In addition to that, the additional uh, material right here is also going to help prevent and damage and wear, uh, especially if you have an issue with the uh, locking lugs on the bolt not completely seating with the barrel extension and uh, that could cause an out of battery detonation. Um, don't know if that is going to hold up to one of those, but that's essentially what I've heard a lot of other people talk about when it comes to the Mark II um, upper receiver. Now, moving on to the barrel. Uh, the barrel is going to be a 16 inch, one and seven inch twist mid-length gas system barrel. And I did that on purpose. I knew that a 16 inch barrel with a mid-length gas system is going to provide a lot less felt recoil to the shooter's shoulder. And it's going to allow you to get back up on target for quicker follow on shots. So um, I did that intentionally, spent obviously a little extra money in getting a mid-length gas system instead of a carbine length gas system. Um, but I knew that that was going to just make this rifle even better. So uh, there is that. The barrel is a CMV steel barrel, and that is going to be BCM's take on the Mil B11959 E specifications that are required for military barrels uh, in any type of rifle that is being used. So the the point of that is that BCM is meeting or exceeding the military requirements to make sure that you have uh, the most heavy duty barrel that you can purchase on the market. So these are MP and HP tested, so you don't have to worry about anything going on there. And uh, the BFH is barrel forged hammered. So what that basically means that this is going to be a hammer forged barrel. And the great thing is it's all made in the USA and that's something I really do like. The barrel is going to be covered by a 15 inch MCMR handguard uh, from BCM that is MLOC compatible um, modular rail is what MCMR stands for. And it's nice, it's not overly thick, it's not um, going to be extremely intrusive. You have MLOC uh, capable slots all over the place so you can put attachments on here wherever you want. The pick section on the top is running the length of it and is T-marked so that's really nice as well. So hopefully you can see a lot of that through the additional pictures that I'm putting in through the B-roll. All right so let's move on down to the lower receiver. Lower receiver is just going to be a basic BCM lower receiver. Uh, it is going to be very similar to that of like an Aero Precision um, M4E1 lower receiver. While it is more of kind of a billet style look to their receivers and Aero, this one's going to be more of a standard mil spec lower receiver, but is going to have uh, a flare magwell, much like the Aero Precision M4E1. And that's something I really like because that kind of keeps things consistent between the different manufacturers of ARs that I have. It's going to have the um, gunfighter pistol grip on here, which is going to be a very shallow angle, much like the um, Magpul K2 grips. I really do like those. And it's going to have some really nice texture on this pistol grip. So if you're not wearing gloves, you're going to be able to get uh, some good grip on here as well. It has an enhanced trigger guard here, and then the trigger itself is going to be a mil spec style trigger. And um, I, I put that in quotation marks because it's really not. It, it, it's, it's going to be what you would expect it to see in most standard AR-15 triggers, but this trigger um, is coming in right around that six pound mark. And then the great thing about it is even though it's technically a two-stage trigger, it doesn't feel like one. There's no take up, there's no creep in this trigger whatsoever. Maybe just a hint of a creep, but you're really not going to notice it one bit at all. So 
there is the brake right there. And then here is the reset. Pretty decent. Um, loud, tactile, no problems. You're gonna feel for it. And then as you can see, there's, there's no take up, no take up whatsoever. There's the brake. If there is any creep, it's very, very slight. And unless you're feeling for it, you're not going to really even know that it's there. Um, Castle Nut is staked, exactly what you would expect from a quality manufacturer like BCM. And then it's going to have the Gunfighter Mod Zero Mod stock on the back side of this. Uh, really nice. Uh, I would say an definite upgrade from a mil spec buttstock. It's got some rubberized um, texture on the back here, which makes things a little bit more comfortable. And then the cheek well here is just slightly larger than what you would expect from, say, a mil spec buttstock. So putting this up to your shoulder feels really comfortable to shoot. So you're not going to have a problem shooting this all day long. So let's talk about the reason as to why you might purchase this rifle. And the biggest reason is going to be the quality. One of the things that BCM prides itself on is going to be their quality control standards. Uh, not to say that, you know, a, a rifle might get away from them or something like that, but they're going to have, I would say, probably far fewer issues when it comes to QAQC than some of the other manufacturers. And a lot of that has to do with the um, policy that they have on testing the materials that they get in from forges. So like the upper and lower receiver is a prime example of that. Most companies will get a batch in. So let's say they get a gross of receivers, depending on which one it is. It doesn't matter which one it is, upper or lower. They get a gross. For you millennials, that's 144 or 12 twelves. <laughs> so if they get 144 receivers in and uh, they, go in to start testing them, most manufacturers are only going to do a lot test. Lot test is going to be a percentage. So let's say that they take 10% of a gross of receivers. So they're gonna take 14 receivers, they're gonna test them. As long as they meet military specifications, then the entire lot is good to go. BCM doesn't do that. They're gonna test each and every single one to ensure that they meet BCM's stringent standards. So you can be guaranteed that a rifle going out the door is more than likely going to be tested by their QAQC personnel to make sure that uh, everything is matching up. You can tell by the fit and finish of this. It's just, it just looks beautiful. And um, you're going to have the quality um, and the reassurance rather, you're going to have the reassurance that you're getting a quality product. And that's something I really do like. Now, naturally that's going to translate into a more expensive firearm because those extra man hours that they're putting in to test all the different components is going to translate into a cost that they're going to need to recoup, which is one of the reasons why a BCM is coming in around that $1,500 mark, depending on what features you're purchasing, but you should expect somewhere between $1,400 to $1,600. So uh, just have, just keep that in mind. Now let's talk about my experience shooting on, uh, shooting this. Like I said, with the mid-length gas system and everything tuned the way they do it, uh, to include the BCM bolt carrier group that I have, um, putting all of that together, has created a very smooth shooting rifle, something that I haven't experienced very much with other rifles. Now I have with some of the longer barreled versions of the AR-15, but realistically for a 16 inch barrel uh, with the mid-length gas system, this is extremely flat shooting and follow-on shots are extremely easy for me. So doing uh, radiant drills or doing um, failure to stop drills where you're putting uh, two in the center of the target and then one above it, uh, you're going to be able to do that a lot quicker than something that is a little bit more budget conscious. Those are going to be usually um, overgassed, so you're going to feel a lot more recoil. This is tuned so you don't have that. And that's something I really, really do like. I did test accuracy, so let's head out to the range and check that out. Okay, we got the uh, 75... Hornady boat tail hollow point loaded up five rounds on the BCM Mark II BFH. Let's see what we can uh, let's see what we can pull out of this one.
Okay, so there you go. Uh, I'm not an excellent shooter. I would say that I'm probably uh, a little slightly above average when it comes to shooting. Um, and could I have extracted a little bit more accuracy out of this rifle with uh, a more powerful optic? Possibly, but realistically, coming in at under an inch at 100 yards, I was very, very happy with not only my ability to shoot, but with this rifle and the ammunition that I paired it with. So. Uh, really super nice. We'll compare this to the other rifle in the next video and we're going to talk about the differences between these two. Now what would I say to someone who is interested in purchasing one of these? If it's a little expensive it's going to be a little bit out of your price range. If you have the ability to I would say go ahead and save the money to purchase one of these rifles. Uh, you're going to have a rifle that's going to last a lot longer than what you probably need it to. Needless to say, a lot of people don't have that luxury. So, you know, looking at budget options is kind of their option. And that's what we're talking about in this video series. What are you getting for this? And what are you getting for lesser expensive rifles? We're gonna be testing that with the Radiant or the Radical firearms, uh, and Anderson lower and then we've got some other examples that we're going to be looking at as well to include my Aero Precision M4E1. So there you have it that's the long and short of this rifle. I'm extremely excited to have this in my collection and it's going to be in my collection for a very very long time so um, can't, uh, can't tell you how much I have really enjoyed it. Sound off in the comment section down below. What do you guys think about the BCM Mark II? Is it a little too much uh, with that additional material on the upper receiver? Uh, what do you guys think? Sound off in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. That's really going to do it for this edition of Fit and Fire. Next video on this topic, we'll be comparing the budget rifle to this rifle, and then we're going to move on from there as well. So thank you so very much, guys, for swinging by. Patreon crew, you guys are a huge help to the channel. If you guys are interested in financially supporting the channel, there are tons of links down in the description below that you can do that uh, to include Patreon, some links to um, Amazon if you guys are interested in that, and then also uh, fitandfire.com has a whole bunch of affiliate, affiliate links if you guys are interested in uh, checking some things out. It's not gonna cost you any extra money and I get a small commission off of it, so that's a great way to support the channel. With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Thank you so much for swinging by, guys. I really do appreciate it. And we will catch you guys next time. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.